Hi everyone. Welcome back. Uh, today we have uh, Vivek Parihar from uh, Webinize Lab. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, how fast you can onboard a new member into your team and the practices that they usually do with their team to do this easy. Okay. Hey guys, good afternoon. I think everybody is tasteful and feeling sleepy. So let's try to make it, make yourself up for next 20 minutes. I will I will be talking about like welcome to the perfect world. Yeah, it is not a perfect world. We but we try to make it a perfect world, and we try to make a virtual perfect world. So basically, like uh, I'm going to talk about like how fast uh, you can onboard a new team team member as well as how fast you can onboard like whole fully functioning team and start doing development. So uh, yeah, and me, uh, I'm a webinizer. I work in a webinize. I'm an AVP of engineering. Uh, I look over like all DevOps and uh, basically I'm a Rubyist. I do program in Ruby, but love Java as well. And great love for infrastructure because it's a, like it's a challenge that you can really every day you keep getting all these new challenge every time. And I do blog uh, at this vparihar01.github.com. And if you want to like connect with me, it's my Twitter handle at the rate vparihar. So, uh, so this is like agenda. Like uh, so, what you are doing? So basically. I will. Uh, it's not related. Like uh, it might be like a lot of you guys are not doing this, but yeah, I'm just going to address what we are doing in previous days, and what's wrong with that, and uh, what are my options, and how I opt it, and what are the future that can we ask from this particular tool that I choose, and how we opt it, and limitation, like little bit of a limitation we still have. Like as I told you, like it's not a perfect world, but yeah, we try to make it as much as perfect. Second is what is my take on that particular methodology. So basically, let's take a, like what we are doing or what we are doing previously or might be you are doing right now. So let's talk about a little bit this typical scenario. Let's say that you have a you have to develop an application or uh, an application that have huge amount of that require a lot of uh, like a lot of different different application stack. It might require like different different languages and uh, like 10 to 15 people is working on that particular team. So so now the like so that the app is huge selling and most importantly, it's very very like it's, it should be work very smoothly so everybody can work seamlessly so so what like i'm just taking example like some of the application stack that we figure out like it might be like a little bit uh, hard to set up for for each and every team member that is that you that might onboard a team so let's say that you are having you have to have like rails node image, image magic fm pack ruby gems and mysql even mongodb so uh, so next thing so what we want from our developer, so they have we ask them to set up a developer environment. So what we what we do first, we give them like some certain readme file in which we written how you can set up an environment. And we listed all these steps that they can follow. So ideally you are going to want all 15 people on uh, on the team working on this app to have identical development environment. And you can provide a like readme file that I told you. Even on the same team, people can have like different different uh, operating system that could be Mac, Windows, and uh, Ubuntu or Linux, whatever Linux system that we are using. So it, it it could be a choice of like a developer that that developer is working on it. So this is a like major problem that we deal each and every day because it could be a front end, it could be a, a like your QA, it could be a developer who might want to work on Mac, or somebody wants to work on comfortable with Windows, and somebody is comfortable with the <coughs> uh, Linux systems. So this is a problem. So, so what's wrong with this particular, uh, with this particular operating system is like, even with the provide, if we provide a full flat documentation to each and every individual, like for a Windows, for a Ubuntu, and for a uh, uh, Mac as well, but everybody is not expert about their operating system. So we have to have somehow given them like some guidelines or steps so so they can follow it. So, like a lot of time we end up with this type of situation, Windows machine yelling, like, what is this uh, image magic? So a lot of time, we, I personally struggle to manage, like install this image magic on Windows, people using Mac asking which is better, like Mac port, Flink, and Homebrew. And so like a lot of people came to you and asked you, OK, dude, I'm not a code. I'm a coder. I'm not a like, DevOps, or I'm not a sysadmin. So you have to set this particular application system for me. I don't know how, how it's going to work for me. So what's wrong with it? Like, let's say that somebody, like a new team member, is onboarding. So what happened? Like, what do we ask? First, we give him like first, uh, like, uh, so what the problem with this is like, how long is going to take? How much time we need? Or how much time that person that who is boarding on that particular team, uh, 
the, that application that we are going to develop, how much time is going to take. We don't want to spend a huge amount of time for that particular team member to, to set up the development environment. So, so what do you know? Like give him a, like again a readme doc. So what the other people is following. It might take a day or two of us, like other team members have to help that person because that person don't know about the operating system. So it's again a problem. So for a new team member, it's again a problem because that person don't know about the application, that person don't, or like don't know about the, your application stacks. So you have to have that person. Again, the second problem we came across a lot when we are working on multiple projects, like, like a lot of you guys are like keep working on multiple projects. So what have been, what, like what is the major problem? So the major problem is like we have to maintain our different different versions of application stack. It could be a program, like it could be a Ruby, it could be a Image Magic, it could be a MySQL, lot of things. So we have to we have to have these things in our mind. So so there are, there is a way that we can solve it, and a lot of programming language provide these things. How how we can handle how we can really version our system. So in Ruby we have like like we have like RVM and we have Bundler and NPM for Node. And for Maven also we can use for Java to really install our dependencies as per required. But they do great things for keeping Ruby version separate and project gems in isolation, the same with other tools as well. But they do nothing to help with application dependence like Oracle, Presenger, Apache, Image Magic, Qt, and etc. So you might end up like, let's say you are working on some MySQL version that and some other MySQL version is not working for application, so what do you do? So that's again a problem. So when you ask that Dave, okay, you have to work on multiple projects, okay, so just swap to that project, but you have to keep your uh, like previous like old school or like or like old stack as it is. So the expression like, so you are telling me I need to install newer version of MySQL, Apache, Ruby, and its dependency for this new project, and but I have to keep my all these previous versions installed in my system. So it's very very tricky because like if you mess up with like your development mind, you have messed up. You have to redo it again. So, and second, one of the like biggest problem that we 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 like we face each and every day. Hey, dude, please work on my machine. Uh, also, a lot of time it's working on my machine. So I'm not getting this error. So how you are getting this error? So please don't me. I am not able to replicate it. So that's a like major problem with this. Like with these up, like we have to have all these uh, development environments should be identical. So. There are a lot of op options available in market and in open source community, so you can use configuration management tool, but still like if you are using configuration management tool, it might require some of the sysadmin or devops practices in hand. A person should have some hands-on on that. So there could be like uh, Puppet, Chef, Vortex, Joker, and Ansible, and Vagrant. So personally, we choose uh, this Vagrant as our like uh, a tool that we can distribute to each and every team member in our, in our organization that can help a lot or that can help to set up a fast development environment. So, so why Vagrant, why we don't let people to or have this installation on their hand? Because we know that human can do error. Human can do like sudo rm minus rf and dot, it will delete each and everything. So these type of common problem can arise a lot of time. And believe me, it's happened a lot. And a lot of people do like chmode 777 dot and you are done. You are not able to boot a system again. So, so we have to give these responses to machine because they know what they are doing. They follow the instruction as it is a 1000 time in the same manner they, are, they did in previous version. So like what is the future? Like what is the future that Vagrant is giving to us and what, what we really want from that particular Vagrant tool is like it solves a very huge problem that works on my machine because a person no longer say that it's working on machine because the the application environment that is on stage or a production or a different QA team have, it's all identical. So we can have the same development environment. In simple words, uh, like what I understand from this particular, uh, like having this uh, Vagrant system or having this Vagrant VM in my system, I can take a snapshot and give it to my team members. So, so what this snapshot means, uh, what I understand from the snapshot, like it's a, like a clear picture of that particular instance Whatever the dependencies, whatever like uh, and your data in your system, you can just take it as it is, and you can distribute to other people as well, without, without like, like uh, you don't have to wait for that particular snapshot to, to hold your work. So using Vagrant, we can build development environments repeatedly across any platform, any operating system. It could be a Mac, it could be a Windows or Linux. I don't mention about Solaris because. 
Uh, I didn't test it, so I cannot tell you about that. Uh, developer's box kind of becomes the sketchy place where you just go and do anything and just wash your hand. And it's, it's in, in you know, VM. It's not going to eat up your whole development system. Vagrant provides a great way to keep all these nicely contained per project away from your previous development. So what are the machine it is, what are the machine that you're using, it should, it's, it's keep intact with all your, like what are dependencies you're installing. It doesn't interfere with your development machine. You can have whatever like, like what, what, what are the mess you have to play, you can do it on your VM. Uh, so yeah, the cool thing about the Vagrant is that you can create a full dev environment with every tool or library required for development already installed and ready to use. And you can start using it. And then you, what you can do, you can distribute that particular environment to your team member as well, packages up and into a single file that you can use it as a template. And then you can have one single file that you can distribute to your team member and everyone, everyone can use the same environment as it is. If the person know about how, it is okay if the person know about it. If that person is not good enough to understand how sysadmin works, how DevOps works, they can really just follow two or three commands. You are done. Your system is working. So new team member onboarding is no problem now for us particularly. So there are some limitations still like they, they have like a lot, lot of limitations still in place while using Vagrant. I'm not sure about like uh, Vagrant. We are using VirtualBox. So Vagrant actually interacts with VirtualBox. It might be the problem or it might not, but sometime it might be a problem because you have to install a new virtual box if, if it is, if it is creating a problem. Second, if you're running the virtual network editor on windows, the forward port will suddenly stop working. So it's, it's not a, like, uh, like a blocker, but it sometimes happens. Like for that, what are you going to do? You just, you have to just do a vagrant reload and everything start working fine. That's all. In some cases, like uh, some people reported, like uh, when when coming to this uh, conference, like uh, somebody uh, like uh, comment on my talk, like Vagrant is not that good in Windows. Yeah, the performance is a little bit slow, but what you can do, there are a lot of uh, uh, methodologies that is available that you can have in Windows. Like you can just enable DNS proxy in NAT mode, so it give a like quite good performance in Windows as well. So there are problems, and we can solve it, but I cannot assure like it would solve each and everything like 100%, there might be a problem. So basically like uh, while using this background, so we have our own take on you to use it and to adopt it as a development environment. So my each and every developer, because we scale from 20 to 200 people in like couple of uh, years. So it's a very huge task for my DevOps team and my uh, network uh, like sysadmin team to really manage all these system as it is. So, so we have to have some solutions so we can really have this development environment set up very fast. It could be in minutes, it could be in like a couple of minutes. So we don't want our developers to keep, uh, like waste our, uh, their, their precious time on like setting up something that they don't have to. So by choosing to use Vagrant, our projects and organization gain some immediate benefits that I'm going to list here. Like every developer is, is now working with identical development environments. This eliminates the large portion of work on my machine. And second and the biggest thing is like, a lot of time, uh, front-end engineers is not able to set up like full stack of uh, application. It might be your one real application is interacting interacting with Node because it's using a pass proxy. So using a pass proxy in Windows and uh, and asking your front-end developer to set up is is quite insane because they don't able to understand. They might have uh, like mess up their Windows machine. So from this, what we can do, we can give them like this particular template what we are using. They have to just do a backend up, and they are done. They can do their own development on this development machine and what are the dependencies they have to run? The Vagrant VM can run on it. No more readme per project or having to ask DevOps for help or simply being blocks. So a lot of time we just copy paste from Stack Overflow or some, some blocks and now, okay, it might work, it might work. But in my MacBook, when I'm selling image magic, it's a nightmare. Somebody told us, okay, use Homebrew, Home, use Fink. So I end up installing each and every of these like uh, uh, tools to make image magic working, but it's quite hard. So uh, like it's the nuclear, op like, uh, so we can divide all these problems in separate, separate sections. So we can have like different, different VMs or different, different project tap template and can store it in one place. If somebody wants to work on some very old, very, very old stack application that require like very old, uh, like Ruby version, PHP version, whatever the versions they are using, we can, make it in a template, we can store it somewhere. If some, if any bug can 
like occur in like some near future, we can ask our developer, okay, use this template and set up the environment and you are done and fix this bug. So it's very, very easy in that perspective. So we, we have like nuclear options. When things go wrong, it can be really disheartening to restore your each and every dependency that is available in your system. It might lost your SSH keys, it might lost your each and every configuration that you did in your development machine. So it's nice to have something and it's nice to just hand, like ask Vagrant to handle this for, for us and we can take a coffee break or like whatever, like we can, whenever we came back, our VM is running back up. So the development environments are now sandboxed with virtual machines, so that's a good part of it. So nobody, nobody can mess up with some different development environments or somebody else's environment. You are just doing, uh, you are just messing up your own VM. So it's your mess, you can clean it, you can, if, if you don't like it, you can just destroy that VM and you can just really make, a, create a new VM out of it. First, the environment can be replicated or run any machine. It doesn't matter if it is Linux, Mac, and Windows. That's like one of the biggest part. If one of our team member, one of us, like DevOps guy in the team, just set up environment, it's done. Everybody can use it apart whatever the like operating system you use, you are using. So you have to just have some small like uh, tools in your uh, like in your uh, machine like Vagrant and Ruby to install it. That's all. So multiple projects with potentially conflicted dependence can even run side by side. The moment you want to run like one some project one, you can just update machine and can start working on the moment you have to work on project two, you can just shut down the first project uh, VM and can you start a second project VM. And that's done, you are done. Yeah, so thank you. That's all from my like, so there are a lot of life from the VM still have like a lot of problem regarding Windows. It might still have like a lot of uh, problem regarding the performance because what are the, uh, the, your assets that is transferring from VM to your machine is a little bit slow because we are using sync, like Windows use sync with the, that is a parameter from VirtualBox. But if we can, if we can use NFS, it is very, very fast. You can, you can get like good amount of performance, but setting with the NFS on Windows is a little bit hard. You have to use open NFS that is available for Windows. Yep. Thank you. Any question? We have time for two questions. Hi. Uh, can I go ahead? Uh, uh, so, my question is like, uh, all of the web dev projects that we have in Mozilla are actually using Vagrant to, you know, uh, like onboard new contributors. But the problem I have seen there is that if the virtual box versions are different uh, from the person who has created the Vagrant VM and the person who's using, especially if it is older, it's really messy to get things set up. So uh, how much of a problem have you faced in getting versions to be the same among the team members that you have? So basically, like, as I told you, like, we have to just give him like, okay, we are using this version and you're done. You have to just set up these two tools and then you can use this particular VM. So it's very easy to just mandate or have some, some documentation around what we are using, what are the practice that we are following across the organization. So there is no like heterogeneous configuration available in organization. It should be like a same, a same concept that should each and every development machine should you use. Yeah. yeah hi, this is Devashish. I have yep. two questions. First question is, uh, the, uh, when you say Windows, how does it work? Suppose our, uh, in our environment we use uh, Visual Studio. The requirement is every developer when he gets onboarded, we have to have Visual Studio Ultimate installed in that particular development machine. Mm -hmm. So how do you manage that? That is first question. So that's a, like, it's a issue. like I have to like answer like from start so I, we, you, we can matter like after this talk, okay. I can be like brief about it. Okay. Second, second question is, yeah. uh, there are certain tools which, uh, so it's, again same example is Visual Studio, it asks for a license. So each, uh, so how do you manage the licenses with this? So. Uh, so we didn't like uh, have like have these type of problem because right now we are not doing any development regarding like uh, Windows related development. So still we didn't figure or, like have these type of problems. But yeah, there are a lot of solution that is available by Windows itself. So if you go to like Windows open source, they have like some separate background setup and there are a lot of things that you can set up in a development virtual machine. Okay, probably we can catch up and... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys.